Well, Jenny, we've got a squad, but we still don't have a coach. What's going on? Well, I think um, we have to be really mindful that we only finalised our, and announced our review three weeks ago, and at that time our head coach resigned. So we're absolutely in the process um, of working towards appointing a coach. Um, we have some potential candidates in the mix. It is a confidential process, but it is absolutely underway and we'll be in a position to name a coach by the 10th of September. There's a lot of reading between the lines going on at the moment out publicly as well that Nolene Toto's team in Australia is obviously in the finals and that's why there is a delay. Can you address that speculation? Oh, look, I think there's a number of factors in place and um, as we said, you know, the review only was announced three weeks ago so it's really important that we take our time look at the criteria of what we need in a coach. This is a vital appointment for us as we lead into 2019. We don't want to rush it um, and we are working towards making sure we have that right person in the role going forward. Are you happy that you've got good quality options? I'm really excited with the potential candidates um, but I want to respect their confidentiality as we work through this part of the process. So just going back then, when's, when will there be a resolution to all of this? To oh, when look, will we have a coach? Yeah, look, absolutely. <laughs> um, look, we, we know that we'll have a coach in place by the 10th of September. Whether that's a head coach appointment or an interim coach, um, we're keeping both options um, open at the moment and that's absolutely our intent. It's a really tight time frame between now and the start of the quad series. So what actually happens with the squad in the interim while there is no official head coach in place? Yeah, look, we're business as usual. They keep um, the squad and the wider development squad, which we'll talk about soon. They're all in doing their strength and conditioning, their work that um, is monitored by our high performance um, ex uh, experts. So we've got that, we've got Super Club coming up. So it really is business as usual for this group. Who selected this team then if there isn't a head coach? Yeah, so um, we gave a brief into our selection panel who are an established panel and we asked them to make sure that we had sufficient breadth of experience and youth because obviously through ANZ we've seen some fantastic talent come through. And what you see in this squad is them playing back that brief. Um, I think it's really exciting. but. Added to that is our development squad, which is also being named today. And what you see there is that next tier of athletes that have still got the ability to push for a spot in 2019. So the selectors were the same for selectors who've previously been doing the job? Yep, so we've got a consistency in that. Have any of the coaching candidates or options had any input in the squad? I think it's really important that we, we gave the brief in to our selectors um, and told them kind of how they needed to view these group of athletes. Looking at who they've come up with, and there's a couple of old, oh, they're probably, I don't want me to call them old, uh, familiar names returning, and Casey Corpua being one. I guess there's been talk about returning to old players. Are you happy, um, as I guess the head of the organisation, to bring back players when we are looking to develop as well? Look, I think we're in a unique time for netball in New Zealand, and over the last 18 months, we've been acutely aware that we need experience on the court to support our young developing players um, and the review sort of supplemented that thinking. So I think what we're doing is we are, we're taking this forward in the way that is um, you know, looking towards 2019, backfilling some of that experience, but allowing that next crop of athletes to be, have the best available people around them to bring them through so they can be those future stars. Along with Casey Corper, Laura Langman returns, which I'm sure will put smile on many faces. Um, what's the process been like with Laura to, in, since she has returned to New Zealand um, earlier in the year? Yeah, so Laura is someone that we have um, we have a high regard for and a lot of respect. And she came back to New Zealand and she was looking for a break from netball. And we needed to be really mindful of that. Um, and in keeping in contact with that, we were able to see her being, um, you know, refreshed by her involvement in other things. And um, I think the timing was right now for her to make a return. 
what happens with her in terms of franchise future and, and where she plays effectively her club club and, and franchise netball? Yeah, uh, look, um, so what Laura has um, been granted is a 12-month uh, exemption by the Netball New Zealand board. Um, she's been playing club netball in Hamilton, which I think she's been terrorising a whole lot of people out there. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really mindful of she's ready to make a return. She's probably looking at what her options are as she moves into 2019. Um, can you just clarify, what do you mean by an exemption from what and, and from when? Yeah, so Laura didn't play in the ANZ Premiership in 2018. So in order for her to be selected in this squad, the Netball New Zealand Board took a decision to grant her a 12-month exemption that will run through from now until the end of the Silver Ferns contracting period, which is 12 months time. So in theory then, that means she could go back and play in Australia, club netball in Australia next year? Yeah, that's a decision for Laura to make at the time. Um, but I think we've been really clear that we are carrying in a select piece on our eligibility criteria into phase two of our review. Um, and that would all be considered as part of that. So where is phase two of the review at? Yeah, so our terms of reference go to our board later this month and that terms of reference covers all of the elements that are going to be looked at as phase two. So it will be things like the selection policy and process, um, our talent pathway and competitions, um, and a number of other high performance aspects that'll go into that. So once the board has accepted that terms of reference, we'll be able to make that public, um, but we'll also be able to set the timeframes around the pieces of work that will roll out as a result you know, it could be some projects will be done um, within six months, maybe some will be longer term, 12 month type projects. You're having to play a very long game with this after the situation that it's been. It's a huge moment for the sport to get things right. I guess, what would you say to the public a, a, about that? Because there is frustration around in, in the netball community about the, the pace of pace of progress, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important that we all understand this is a fundamental time of change for netball. And what we get to do now, and myself as the CEO, is lead this transformation. There hasn't been change like this. We are busting some of our traditional behaviours and our norms and we need to do that because we haven't been getting the results that we've been after. So um, new terrain brings uncertainty and we're asking people to um, be part of that change. And um, look, we're really excited about where it's going to take us. Well, thank you for your time. Good luck with it all. Thank you.